Hello again. I hope you are having a great day. I'm glad you decided to join me for our study of the Word of God. We are in a series of messages on the parables of the Lord Jesus Christ. We started by looking at the parable sayings of the Lord. We are currently in a little section that I'm calling the parable similitudes of the Lord. And then after a while, we'll get into the parable stories of the Lord. But let's look at the yoke, Matthew chapter 11, in verse 29 and 30. Interesting verse. Many of you have read these verses many times. Let's take another look, shall we? The yoke, Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Christ used the common and ordinary things of life as illustrations in his teaching. He used salt. He used cloth. He used trees and gates. Items people would be familiar with and items that people understood. In today's parable, Christ used a yoke. A yoke is a wooden beam with two U-shaped pieces of wood, typically, that encircle the necks of a pair of oxen as they are working together. When Christ said, take my yoke upon you, and my yoke is easy, everyone knew what he was talking about. He was talking about a yoke that was used to harness uh, two oxen together for work. Now, I believe there's a, a, a the overall simple lesson here is that Christ's yoke speaks of labor and learning. His yoke speaks of labor and learning. Let's break it down. First, I want you to notice the command. The command. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you. Do you see that? I want you to notice that this parable begins with a command. And the person giving the command is Christ. Christ is the source of the command. So the command's important. This command is to have a priority in my life, and it's to have a priority in your life as well. Now notice the service in the command. The yoke which oxen wore harnessed them for work. So this command of Christ is talking about your work. It is simply another way of saying work for Christ. You should labor for Christ. You should serve Christ. The yoke is the service that Christ gives us to do. There is an old-timey commentator I like, Matthew Henry. Many of you may have his commentaries. Matthew Henry said this, Christ has a yoke for our necks, as well as a crown for our heads. I like that. So the yoke speaks of Christian service. And when I think of this Christian service, I think of three things. First, I think of submission. Submission. Taking a yoke upon you means submitting yourself to someone else. In other words, when a yoke is upon you, it will control your life. It controls the direction of your life. Taking upon us the yoke of Christ is submitting to him as our ruler. Therefore, to take the yoke upon you as Christ commands is to submit yourself to Christ's service and do what he tells you to do. This yoke speaks of Christian service. So I think of submission. I also think of service. Once the yoke is upon you, sacrifice becomes part of your life. Service and sacrifice. You sacrifice your time and energy to the will of another person. You may have other plans, but the yoke determines 
what you do. So you have submission, you have service, sacrifice, and then you have sweat. The yoke means work. And work means effort. And effort means sweat. Listen, folks, a yoke is not a recreation program. It's not fun and games. It's work. So we look at this a service as a command, the service in the command. And then there's the sequence in the command. Notice, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, take my yoke upon you. Did you see that? Notice that the command, take my yoke upon you, comes right after another command from Christ, come unto me. Come unto me, take my yoke upon you. Now, these two commands don't refer to the same matter. The first command is referring to salvation. The second command is referring to service. Notice the power in salvation. Verse 28, come unto me. The word me refers to Christ. He's the source of salvation. Without Christ, there is no salvation. So there's power in salvation. But notice the problem for salvation. Labor and heavy laden. This speaks of the work of sin upon man. Sin is a tough taskmaster. Sin is a heavy burden. So the power in salvation is Christ come unto me. The problem for salvation is the uh, heavy burden of sin. Then notice there's the person in salvation. The person. Notice in verse 28. Small word. Come. Come. When a person comes to Christ, he is confessing the labor and heavy laden condition of himself. He's confessing the sinful life that he has that has laid this heavy burden upon him. In other words, when a person comes to Christ, he is confessing the fact that he is a sinner. No one gets saved unless they confess that they are a sinner. No one. So you have the power in salvation, the problem for salvation, the person in salvation, <laughs> and then I like it, the promise in salvation. Look at verse 28. I will give you rest. Isn't that a great word? Rest. The word rest speaks of salvation. The word give, I will give you rest. The word give means salvation is a free gift. The word give speaks of grace. Now, to whom is the gift of God's grace extended? Come unto me all. Do you see that? Come unto me all, and I will give you. Right? The word you refers to all. Come unto me all, and I will give you. The word you refers to all. All who come to Christ will receive rest. Now follow me. Christ encourages all to come to him for the promise of salvation. If he has pre-selected only a select few people to receive the promise, then his encouragement to everyone to come to him is not genuine and is not sincere. Why would Christ extend to everyone an invitation of salvation if some were incapable of responding to his invitation? It would, it would not be a sincere invitation. The promise of salvation is for all to come to Christ, and anyone who does, they will receive rest, the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ.
So that's the command. Now let's talk about the character. Let's talk about the yoke. There's the master of the yoke. Verse 29, look at it. Take my yoke upon you. The word my in the command says the yoke belongs to Christ. Christ is the master of the yoke. Who the master of the yoke is will determine the character of the yoke, whether it is uh, a good yoke or a bad yoke. Not all masters work their oxen the same. Some are nice and some are cruel. Now, in our text, is a twofold description to show the excellence of the master of this yoke. And the first is the word, the words meek and lowly. I want you to notice the meekness. Christ is not an arrogant person. He was humble. A meek and lowly person makes a good master. Note, it is meek and lowly in heart. This is the only text in the Bible that specifically mentions the heart of Christ. His humility and his holiness was not for outward show. It was genuine. His meekness, his humility, his holiness was a genuine, heartfelt. So we have meekness. Notice in 20, verse 29, mercy. We not only have meekness, meek and lowly, but we have mercy. Ye shall find rest for your souls. You see, Christ is not a slave driver. He provides rest for his servants. They're not worked without mercy. A good master provides rest for his servants. Notice in verse 28, I will give you rest. That's salvation rest. Verse 29 says, ye shall find rest. That's service rest. Salvation rest and service rest. You see, spiritual service will make you weary in the spiritual area, just as physical service makes you weary in the physical area. Spiritual rest and refreshing come from Christ, just as salvation rest comes from Christ. So we have this master of the yoke. Then notice in verse 30, the manner of the yoke. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This description of the yoke also helps us learn some important things about the character of the yoke. Notice the work of the yoke. Easy. The word easy means pleasant. In other words, when you put on the yoke of Christ and you take upon him uh, yourself the work of Christ, it's not a bitter experience like working for sin. Folks, there's a joy in serving Jesus Christ. Serving Jesus is not always peaches and cream, but it's not harsh or mean or bitter. So you've got the work of the yoke easy. Then you have the weight of the yoke, light. The word light means light in weight. The yoke of sin is heavy. It's a yoke of slavery. The yoke of sin hinders and grieves and destroys. In comparison to the yoke of sin, Christ's yoke is light. So we have the command, the character. Now how about the compensation? Look at verse 29. And learn of me. <laughs> there are many wonderful compensations and rewards and blessings from serving Christ. Notice in this text the promise of learning. The promise of learning is given to the industrious not to the lazy. Those who wear the yoke will be taught. 
In other words, those who serve will be schooled. Those who labor will learn. Our Sunday school teachers, for example, wear the yoke of Christ. They labor and they serve teaching children and teenagers and adults the Word of God. They teach the Word of God in order to meet the spiritual needs of other people, but in the process, they themselves learn many wonderful spiritual truths they otherwise would not have learned. When you teach a children's Bible study, you learn. When you work in Awana, you learn. You may be teaching the most basic, simple truths, and yet you learn truths that help you as an adult. Now, many people do not grow in spiritual knowledge because they're not serving the Lord. Everyone who serves faithfully learns. It's a blessed compensation of the yoke. There's the promise of learning. But notice also there's the person in the learning. Look at the phrase, of me. The words can be applied two different ways. Of me can mean from Christ, or it could also mean about Christ. You are learning from Christ and learning about Christ. When you learn from Christ, he is your teacher. When you learn about Christ, he is the subject. Today, many church members know a lot about politicians. They know a lot about star athletes. They know a lot about Hollywood movie stars, but they don't know more much about Christ. Many church members know a lot more about worldly things than they do about Jesus Christ. Make sure you're not one of them. There's an old hymn. I like it. I'll sing it to you. More about Jesus would I know. More of his grace to others show. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. More about Jesus let us learn. More of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. More about Jesus in his word, holding communion with my Lord, hearing his voice in every line, making each faithful saying mine. More about Jesus on his throne, riches in glory all his own, more of his kingdom's sure increase, more of his coming, Prince of Peace. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. God bless you.